Section 6.6, .6, Representations of Orbitals. If you remember that an orbital is a room for two college girls that hate each other, that they have to stay together all the time, and so they're going to avoid each other because they're the same charge. You also have various subshells that these orbitals fit in. So since you have, since you have n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, etc., then your second subshell is going to be starting at 0. This is your L subshell. Starting at 0 and going up to n minus 1. So this will be 1, 2, and then in this case, like if you had have n equals 4, this would be 3. So you'd have 0, 1, 2, and 3. The m sub 1 subshell can go from negative 3 to positive 3. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now watch this. I'm going to put this in red. If I have one subshell, I'm only going to have the 0. I'm only going to have the 0, which means I have just an S. If I have two subshells, I can have the negative 1, the 0, and the 1, which means that the P, so the, one, the S has only one orbital, the P has 3. If I have L equals 2, then I go from 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, which means the D has 5. And if I have uh, L equals 3, then M equals 1 is 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, which means the F equals 7. So the number of rooms that you have in the subshell, that's what your M sub 1 tells you about. So there's one room in an S orbital. Let me erase that one here. There's one room in the S subshell, one orbital. There's three orbitals in the P subshell. There's five orbitals in the D, and there's seven orbitals in the F. This section just tells you kind of what does it look like knowing that essentially it's a probability of dots. If you were to, to say, where, what pro, what's the probability that you would be anywhere in this world from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night, 8 in the morning, you would be at home at a certain time. You'd have lots and lots of probability being at home. Does that mean you're home every second of your life from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock? No, you're probably at school. So you'd have more of a likelihood to be at school. Uh, from in between, you'd be have a, more of a likelihood to be on Taze Valley Road at a certain time. You'd have more likelihood to be at Grandma's on Thanksgiving Day. So you have a likelihood of being somewhere and that's what the shape is. It's just probability. Where does this electron hang out? So what you do when you have a scatter dot plot from this big complicated math thing, the s orbitals tend to have a dot that kind of looks like a sphere. So it's spherical, and the radial probability function from this section that was so hard, oh my goodness, ridiculous, would never imagine knowing that, just means this, that if you have one, it's likely to be right there. That's where it's likely to be. If you, then it goes to zero, which it's likely to not be there at all, and then you have a second one, and it's more spread out, which means that if, you, if the electron is not in the 1s, then it would be in the 2s. So here's 1s, and then there's the 2s. And then if it's not in the 1s and the 2s, then it goes to 0 again, and then it goes to the 3s. Now look, the 2s is bigger than the 1s, and the 3s is bigger than the 2s, and that's all this is. You have a certain size of distribution, and then this is bigger because it's, it's got all the insides plus outsides. Every time you go to a new row, you're getting farther and farther away from the electron. So it's nested shells 
of electron density. That's all it is. But the S is still is a spherical, a spherical shape. So here's the here's that that again. Here's the 1s. This would be 1s and 2s. This is 1s, 2s, and 3s. And they're all going to be a certain size away from the, the nucleus. And so if you have n equals 3, you're more likely to be here. If you're at n equals 2, you're more likely to be here. And if you're at n equals 1, you're more likely to be here. So your first room, the first college room, that's the lowest energy, cheapest rent, is going to be your S. And your S has one orbital in it, and it's called the 1S, the 2S, the 3S. Your second room, okay, after the S is full, the next cheapest room is the P. And the P has, the, that floor has three rooms in it. Remember, your S is on the first floor. It only has one room, and you can have two girls in it. Your next cheapest floor is the second floor, and it's the P subshell, and the P subshell has three orbitals. Now, what this is, is this is the electron density. Electron density, it's just where it happens to hang out. So you're getting these dumbbell shapes where you have a node right at the nucleus where there's no electron going to be at the nucleus because the nucleus is positively charged. So the nuclei, the electron's going to hang out in these regions to the sides of the, of the nucleus. And they're dumbbell shaped. And there are three orbitals. The first orbital is an x orbital. Okay, so it's in the x direction. The second one is the y. It's in the y direction. And the third one is in the z. That's the z direction. So you have an x just like you do in math. You have a y just like you do in math. So here's your x. Here's your, um, that's x. Here's your y. And then z comes out of the board. So you have it all in three directions, all with dumbbells. So I could fill that in and you could kind of see that I've got dumbbell shapes in three dimensions. That's your P subshell. So your P has three orbitals in it, the X, the Y, and the Z. Your D orbitals have five possibilities. And so you can see that the math gets wackier and wackier, that you can't even draw the F's. I've never seen a book ever that had the F's in it. All they said is it's really complicated. I've seen the D because you can kind of get this. It's a four-leaf clover in the X direction. It's a four-leaf clover in the Y direction. It's a four-leaf clover in the Z direction, all kind of coming in all directions. And then in the middle, there's kind of a, dumb, a dumbbell with a donut. Who cares? It's simply a region in space that it, look, that it looks like. Okay, so the D orbital is going to have five rooms. So your S orbital is your lowest cheap rent. Your P orbital has three. That's the next cheapest room. Your D orbital has five, five rooms. And then the very last one will be the F and there'll be seven. And you can see it's one, three, five, seven. So there's a math formula here of where these electrons happen to live in space. As it's getting bigger and bigger, you've got more room around the electron for these, around the nucleus for these electrons to live. And so they live in these regions of space because it's likely, as it's whirling around in this clouds, likely to be here, likely to be here, not likely to be here, etc.